Well, grace and peace, everybody. This is Pastor Nate, and you're joining us again on Bridging the Gap podcast. Uh, Thank you for joining, and uh, I'm Pastor Nathan Brozier, as many of you know. Uh, If you will please just share this broadcast to your social media platform, and just hit the subscribe button right below to get weekly updated sessions. Today, I want to thank my guests once again for joining me on this week's episode of Bridging the Gap, Pastor Devin Cole. Thank you for joining me once again this week, Pastor Cole. Hey, it's an honor, man. I appreciate it. Hey, man. Great session last time. It was great to hear things I didn't even know about you, man. So this is awesome. So this week, we're going to dive into a little bit more of a a topic of, of called teamwork. And uh, a teamwork in the ministry, teamwork in the workplace. Yeah. You know, we haven't always been in pastor no. and leadership, so we we understand. Me and you have a very similar uh, a story that uh, uh, we we were sharing offline. And so, uh, but Devin, we we talked sometime last week about your journey through ministry. I know right now you are the lead pastor of Christian Heritage Worship Center. First off, what have you been seeing God doing in Kokomo, Indiana, as a whole in the surrounding? church body. I know every region is different, but similar at the same time. So to answer that question, it's kind of a a tough question to answer, but Kokomo is very diverse, similar to where you guys here are in Muncie, but I would say probably even more. Um, And so we've got a lot. I mean, it's like a buffet of churches there. It really is. You can find anything and everything. But what I see God doing is You know, we see a lot of walls being taken down that have been up for a long time. What I mean by that are like denominational walls, uh, theological walls. And and you see that a lot, not everywhere, Mm. but in our circle, we see it's like, okay, you may not see everything. You may not interpret it exactly, Mm -hmm. but the bottom line is, is are people seeing Christ? Right. And, and so that's one thing that we've seen a breakthrough in, in Kokomo, and it's been refreshing, man. It really has. That's awesome. So, so that's interesting. So you, you mentioned you have, how, how do you, have you ever did a statistic or study on, on the statistics? Of, gosh, of, it's been a while. Okay. No, I, I remember reading it okay. year, probably five years ago, but okay. I forget it to be honest gotcha. with you. Cause it's like, you know, I guess everybody comes in these same, same issues where you got this denomination have a more where I come out of Salina, uh, I want to say seventy percent of the people identified themselves that were considered Christian as Catholic okay. or Lutheran. So yeah, it was a very interesting uh, yeah. a demographic of people. And I told Pastor Bratcher a few weeks ago, I said, you know, that's what you're going to be dealing with. Yeah, uh, and so he, different uh, culture, <laughs> whole different mindset. Yeah, totally. I mean, if you grew up in a, a predominant Pentecostal or let's say yeah. apostolic. Yeah. You know, you, you could deal with the people who are hurt from churches of I'm condemned by everything I do yeah. from that mentality. That's you understand your demographic, and which is what we have here. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a huge demographic of uh, Pentecostal apostolic type of uh, settings around here. Okay. A lot of church hurts. And, yeah. you know, Anderson's yeah. just right up the road where it's predominantly Church of God um, okay. up there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, it's, it's just very interesting how we how we are faced with certain things in each demographic, each region, as we'd say. Now, today I wanted to talk to you about teamwork in the church. Yeah. Now, this this past week at Destiny, we had an event called Party in the Park on Sunday, and, and it really was a success. We've been talking about it today, uh, uh, about how well it went. I was talking with some staffers over at our church and about how uh, excellent some things ran yeah. because of simple teamwork and uh uh, on that particular Sunday, we had over 400 people at least, we think, came awesome. to the park awesome. and it was ministered to alongside with feeding all of those people, providing door prizes, games for children, tournament, basketball tournament for teens. And I had a disc golf tournament yes. for some adults that wanted to come over and play. And and so you understand the importance of teamwork because yeah. each year Christian Heritage has a youth camp on yeah. your campus. And yeah. I know where we've had over 100 children or 100 students uh, would come out to youth camp and not even counting some of the adults that you had bring. So you understand the purpose of how it takes, how much it takes to feed these people, yeah. how many, how many staff people you need to be over there to, or from, a, from, to watch the dorms, to be outside, to run the facilities. And you got to allow all these activities to be ran, church services to be ran. Yeah. And so talk to us the importance of teamwork in ministry. Well, John Maxwell says it best mm-hmm. as in, Teamwork makes the dream work. Mm. You can't, there, there's no way you can do that stuff alone. Yeah. I mean, like a, that park, uh, what sure. you guys, what was it called? 
Yeah, we called it party in the park at party the, in the park. park. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's similar to our camp meeting, you know, because there's so many different things exactly. in so many different areas. And where you have to realize is it's not going to work if you try to do it all yourself. Right. You've got to have a team. That's and, it. and to be honest with you, with camp, you know, people say, oh, how do you do that? I, I don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. I empower people sure. to do it and trust them to do it. Um, and, and obviously they come to me with guidance or need, you know, some direction and help and I help in where I can, but we could not do that without yeah, an right. incredible staff. There's no mm-hmm. way we can do it. And it's all volunteer. Every yeah. part of it's volunteer. Nobody gets paid mm-hmm. um, to do that, but it's a higher calling. And it's, it's a, a word that, you know, I, I think we uh, are going to hit on today is purpose. Yeah. Um, purpose. Why do we do what we do? And, you know, without a team, you will nothing great has been accomplished yeah. without a great team. That's the truth. There's always somebody or a group of people behind That's it. the vision. It, yeah. it, it just has to. Me, me and you're both sports minded people. Yeah. And, you know, we always hear this debate on the who's the goat, you know, and it's the Jordan LeBron. Yeah. People want to throw Kobe, which I don't think Kobe's on that no, level. With no, he's team. not. No. Uh, but you talk about Jordan, but Jordan was a great, great, great player. Yeah. And growing up watching this man play, he never won anything until he grabbed a Phil Jackson to come yeah. into the, the scene. And do you know what Phil Jackson him? told him? What's that? He said, you can't be a lone wolf. He goes, you need to be in the wolf pack. That's good. And, and that's what changed his mindset. That's if you watch truth. that documentary, that's what he that's says. Right. That's and right. When he realized that he's only going to go as high as his teammates will let him. That's it. Right it changed there. everything in Jordan. You know, all these years we've watched sports. We've, we've, we've played sports. Yeah. You could be the greatest player. But here's what I've noticed in softball worlds. I can hit as many home runs in a row, but guess what? When that team decides, hey, let's walk that guy. Yeah. Let's see who else can beat us. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> I'm not effective anymore. It's exactly and it. And so I guess we got to break. Jordan was only as good as Jordan was. I mean, he was the greatest scorer, greatest player, arguably to, to, to date. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, he had to have a Pippen, a Horace Grant, a Dennis Rodman down the road. Yeah. He needed great players around him to to work as a team. Yeah, and, and think then, about those names you just said. Yeah, who would you? Horace Grant. You had the who, Horace Grant, Scott, Scotty Pippen, Scotty Pippen, and Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman. If you've ever, if you know anything about sports, well, first you know that MJ is the goat. I'm sorry, Isaiah. I know he's going to be upset with that one, but look at those personalities and how totally different those three men are. Sure, sure. totally different. It's true. I mean, but they made it work. Why? That's right. Because of teamwork that's and leadership, that's where leadership comes in. Is you take totally different personalities and get them to work for the same right. purpose and the same vision. You know, I think we talked about it where there is no vision. The people perish. Yeah. I think I might have stole one of your yeah, scriptures. Well, my points. You, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, yeah. we'll get to that in a minute. But the thing is, they took those totally different personalities. Exactly. And sometimes we think we can only work with people who look like us, think like us, that's act right. like us. Same background, yeah. same culture. Yeah. You're right. But, but you know, you look at the greats. You, you look at Nick Saban sure. uh, with, sure, with good. this powerhouse of uh, Alabama. And, and not just that, you can look at companies. Uh, uh, you, you, you know, you just, the entrepreneurs, and you look at these people, and they have the yeah. ability to get people, sure. totally diverse people, to come together for the same goal right. and same focus. That is where teamwork is truly going to strive is when you have the leadership to lead mm-hmm. the teamwork and that's, to keep everything in balance. You, you brought up Nick Saban, which for those that don't may not know who that is, that's Alabama's head coach. It's a university college football, college yeah. football. but, but, but something that's, I've heard people say, well, Nick Saban's only as good. Cause he got all these great players around him. He's got the five stars of every, yeah. the, every area, every, every position. And and that's a good statement, true statement, actual statement. Yeah. But nonetheless, you're taking egos. Oh yeah. You're taking people who know they're the best the trying best. to tell them to submit yourself yeah. to somebody else over here to or in order to make a big pro, big yeah. old uh, solution to yeah. th- this 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 thing he's developed and and sometimes we think well give us throw me the best players and we'll win that's not how it always no, works not even close you got to have strong leadership in order and I like what you said you have to empower people yeah if you just sit there and I'm going to be a dictator. I'm Pastor Devin Cole, yeah. <laughs> and I am going to be the final say to everything. Yeah, you can do that. Your results might not pan out. Yeah, uh, you're going to maybe get some bitter people, angry people. Uh, instead of saying like what I love about your group, you can say, "Hey Nate McClurg, 
Yeah. I want you to oversee this. Yeah. Hey, Marlon and Marta, you do good at this. You focus on this. Yeah. Uh, you, whoever's in your kitchen, I want you to focus on that. And that's yeah. you. Yeah. The more you empower the people, the people grow. But you know what? It also gets messy too. Sure it does. But when you do that, so you have, you, you, you're going to have messes mm-hmm. when you empower. But if you dictate and you put your thumb mm-hmm. over, it's easier in a sense because you control everything, sure, sure. but you put a lid on your, you do. your your team. You put a lid on your team. Yeah, growth it can only okay, it can only be as big as it can be. Yeah. You know, we talk about teams putting superstars together. I mean, we're looking at today's environment. We got everybody thought the Nets were supposed to win it this year, right? Yeah. In, in the NBA yeah. world, you have Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie Irving, yeah. Blake Griffin, all these superstars. But did they win it this year? A lot of ego, too. A lot of ego. And you know what no Nick control. Saban says? And you actually said when he brings in those top dogs, they're mm-hmm. the top dogs in their state. And, yeah. they're, and they come sure to there, they and they're just another guy. They're another and guy. And you know what he tells them every time? Because I follow these great coaches. Because sure there's something to learn from yeah. these guys. He says, you got to leave your ego at the door. Yeah. They teach that in basketball. They teach that in college football. They teach that to win championships. I mean... Do you know who first told us to lose our ego? I mean, John the Baptist told us, mm-hmm. if God is going to increase in your life, there's a requirement. you got to decrease. That's it. Churches, we got to lose our That's ego good. in churches. That's good. And, and, and that will kill a ministry. And, and you see it over and over again. Um, ego is, you know, a killer it's right. to a team. It's true. Yeah. The ego is detrimental to teamwork. I mean, it is because when we think it's all about us or I and yeah. uh, what's the old saying? There's no I in team. And, and yeah. it's so true because we get in the way yeah. and allow and instead of allowing people to really utilize what they're already gifted at being or doing, then we are we are stunting the growth. I like how you yeah. you 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 looked at you said we put a lid on it. Yeah. But we begin to stunt the growth. You Absolutely. mentioned my son's name just a minute ago. Yeah. If I tell Isaiah, here's the only way you can this is the only thing I need you to do. Yeah. Instead of saying, Hey, I want you to expand your horizons. Yeah, use your grow, brain. Use your gifts. And allow it to be then 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 who knows what the future can hold. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah, I mean it's this is huge and, yeah. and key to uh, teamwork and ministry. So let me ask you this. What are some of the hardest things that you have experienced so far, even in the church or outside of the church, uh, about people to buy into teamwork mentality? People to buy in. So the toughest thing with leadership is people. <laughs> I <laughs> that's mean, a, that's so you think about it. Dominant statement. You wouldn't hire man. We would have no need for managers if people were easy to manage. That's right. If people all did the best that they could on their own and we're all self-motivated, you wouldn't have CEOs, you wouldn't have That's managers. True. And so God has given us the gift of leadership. Um, and it can be uh, stressful sometimes. And so mm-hmm. getting people to buy in, this is my go-to with that, is um, purpose. Mm-hmm. Purpose is the high octane fuel that drives people. Amen. If you don't have purpose, you have no hope, you, you're wandering around aimlessly. Right. So purpose, people have to know why are they waking up in the morning? Right. Why am I doing this? Why am I uh, waking up and, and at before everybody else uh, to, to uh, get up and jog or to get up and work out or, or to get up and work on my business or to get up and read a book to yeah. make myself better or to get up and pray? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, there has to be a purpose behind those things because it leaks. Our That's motivation right. leaks. Sure but if you keep the purpose at the forefront, the greatest buy-in is, is as I believe, two things. Number one is purpose, but number two, people are going to follow what they see, not mm-hmm. what they hear, That's not good. what they perceive. They're going to follow what they see. And That's if you're good. not setting the example, don't, it, you don't ever expect somebody to go further than you That's on good. your team if you're not willing to go there as the leader. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You know, we forget about that too. Uh, Man, that is that's a that's a powerful statement right there. That's great, man. This is this is good stuff. I hope you're enjoying this at home right now. And I I really pray because I mean we're me and Devin has not always been in church, so mm-hmm. we've understood that we've had to understand what leadership from management yeah. outside of church world. It's it's hard enough to get people to buy in yeah. that are volunteering. So it was easy when I was a manager of a warehouse. <laughs> you know, you're getting paid. I'm getting paid. Hey. I'm going to write you up and, right. and, and I'm going to fire you. It's yeah. hard to fire volunteers. 
<laughs> you can, but you can. <laughs> yeah, what's that going to look like? Yeah, but no, it it it, it requires a whole other level yeah. of leadership. You're right, and 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 uh, you can't coerce people or or leverage or manipulate people. You sure. know, like you can on you know, basketball. I just make you start doing a bunch of push ups. Exactly. You know, you go run, get laps. on the line, yeah, run. yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, in church, you 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 know, with volunteers mm-hmm. and even in business, yeah. people have to want to follow you. Yeah. Um, it's That's all good. about influence. And if That's you can't good. influence people, leadership is not about your position. Leadership is all about your influence. That's it. And if you're so, like you said, people aren't just going to follow just because mm-hmm. of your position. They're going to exactly follow right. because they want, you know, you have to gain the trust and you yeah. have to be the one to go out and do it. You know, there's a proverb. I mean, we always want to think this as a Christian uh, statement, but, you know, actions speak louder than words. Yeah. I mean, we can bark and bark and bark. And that and that's one method of leadership, if, yeah. however it works for yeah. you. Yeah. And if you get to a position, you know, you think about the president of the United States, they can bark. Yeah. And they have a lot of people that have to do what he says. Has to, yeah. And to get an order. But at the end of the day, actions speak louder than words. If I'm one of those people, I respond when I see a Pastor Devin out there on the campgrounds, sweeping the dirt off the the basketball courts, blowing, not just saying somebody else's, that's below me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Somebody else do that. Yeah. To me, that speaks volumes, a volume in the room. And so I I, I feel like we need to never forget that. Well, and it's, when we're talking, so obviously we've come from uh, a world outside of church, Mm -hmm. but now, especially when you come into church, and really even the world is kind of, understanding this kingdom principles are way different you know jesus said if you want to be first you got to be last Last, if you want to lead you better first be the servant Mm. and actually if you want to be number one you got to be the slave kingdom principles are flipped upside down right so when i learned that that made the whole (laughs) coming into a leadership position in a church i understood and we have to take kingdom principles you know the bible says set your mind on things above i don't think don't get caught up in this so We've got to serve. I mean, nothing as a pastor, yeah. nothing is below me. I, I Because I'm at the bottom. Yeah. I've got to be on my knees washing the dirty feet. That's it. Um, so nothing is below us. And if we get to the point where we start thinking, uh, that's for, you know, not saying that you have to spend 40 hours a week cleaning toilets. Sure. That's, you know, you're not going to be effective. Sure. But sure. nothing can be below us. And, and when we truth. talk kingdom principles, that begins to change things Amen. and it changes your influence too. That's the truth. People see that yeah, and they want to give, go above and beyond, so yes, to speak, yes. to help out. That so. will probably help with buy-in more than anything. Oh, sure. sure I answer. agree with that. Yeah. So if you're watching this leaders yeah. and uh, uh, employers, if you want your people to buy in, you have to be willing to get dirty and not just bark. Yes. And you've got to be willing to dig deep with, dig the trenches with them. Absolutely. To let them see, you know, uh, yeah, this is, this is good. Yeah. I, I pray that, that people are getting this this week. Yeah. I, I believe that most people don't get involved in ministry or follow through because of a lack of vision. You talked about vision just a yeah. minute ago and we can say the buy-in is not convincing enough. Well, as a leader, not just a church leader, but a business owner, a supervisor, et cetera, how do you think we should approach this area? You, you kind of hit it a little bit yeah. with the get dirty, show them by example. Yeah. I mean, can you think of anything else? Cause you, you did mention Proverbs 29 and 18 yeah. where there is no vision that people perish. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me start by saying this. When you're talking about buy-in, and, and, and I want to make sure I hit on this question, when you talk about buy-in, you talk about uh, vision, the number one thing that I've known for myself, and, and I would think that this would help your audience also, mm-hmm. is expectations. Mm. So as a leader, you got to know what's expected of yourself, yeah. but as volunteers or as employees, you've got to be able to set expectations. You can never expect expectations to be met Mm -hmm. if they are not first set. Mm, You can't expect standards to be met if standards aren't set. That's good. So I remember, you know, my first year as pastor, the whole thing is my uh, leadership team. I shouldn't say my, the leadership team of the church and the church board, which I am a part of. Mm -hmm. We set expectations. What is expected of me? If you set Most people, the average person that sets their own expectations are going to set them pretty easy, pretty light, 
it, it's like, why do people hire uh, trainers in workouts? Exactly. Because if I made my own workout, it's going to be cake, right? Yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to push myself. We need to be able to be pushed as human beings. It's, it's, it's critical that we're pushed. Um, and so, you know, I guess to answer your question is set expectations. That's good. But don't ever expect somebody to go further than what you are Amen. willing to go yourself. You know, I think we get that confused sometimes we, as, as leaders, we have such a zeal. We have such a burning desire to see this vision yes. be fulfilled. That's why they're CEOs. That's why they're leaders, head leaders, general managers, because they see the big picture, but not everybody else is going to have that zeal and excitement That's right. that you do. So my, my thing with, with big leadership or major leadership is communication. Yeah. If you can't communicate your vision clearly, yes. then you're not going to get everybody, number one, to buy in to the point where they're going to fight like you're fighting it. Yes. But yes. you want them to see it so they can say, just let me help him at least yeah. or help her uh, to, to, to fulfill what this is where you're going. And I feel like we, we miss that. We just assume so much. Sometimes we assume that you, you should know when the whole time it's because of our lack of communication. Well, and it's like John Maxwell says, vision leaks. Yeah. So you've got to communicate it. And a lot of people think I've communicated at one time. We're good. I've said it once. <laughs> yeah. But it, 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 com, it, vision leaks. That's it. And, and so as a leader in the business world, anywhere, I mean, if you're wanting people to sell uh, a product, mm -hmm. you, you've got to set uh, uh, expectations of this vision sure. and, and know that vision is going to leak. And so you've got to be able to come up with um, what, what um, Urban Meyer calls the clarity of purpose. Mm. So, okay, so we're a church, obviously. I mm. pastor a church now. Um, our job is to see, so our clarity of purpose is this, lives changed, right. relationships built, and Jesus lifted up. That is what we do in a nutshell. So if you're FedEx, it's Deliver the packages. Yeah. If if you're, uh, uh, you know, I, I'm looking, you know, at this water sure. bottle. If if to make the best water possible, sure, sure. You got to know your your purpose. Your purpose mm. is what fuels you. But the problem is, especially with teamwork and with leadership, is you can get caught up in so many different things. Mm, that's true. Um, and you can get distracted. And you've got this group over here doing this. And this group is over here. They're really mm -hmm. focused on, on, on praise and worship. And then this group over here is saying, hey, we need to update the property and the building. And you can get all these different ways, but your clarity of purpose that's it, that's can get good. lost. And yeah. so what is your purpose? So if you're a leader and you're watching uh, this uh, episode, what is, be able to define your yeah. business, your purpose as a leader in a short sentence, easy to remember, yeah. like with Christian heritage. And I, and we break this down in sermons, life change, relationships built, Jesus lifted up. And you can't say it just once because it's going to leak. Yeah. It has to be at the constant forefront That's good. And, and people have to know what they're striving for and what they're going for. Yeah. Um, otherwise we get lost. We get distracted. That's good. So yeah. You know, well, it comes down, you know, you have to have, you have to have a motto or whatever you want to say, logo, some people yeah, call it. Yeah. But us at Destiny, those that go to Destiny, we understand love God, love others, yes. then serve the world. That's it. You have to have a purpose, as you mentioned, yes. and that's it. That's it on the head. That's it. That's the money shot. And, you know, I, I put down here in notes, uh, we have to thoroughly share our vision. And, and that takes communications. I, I'm a where, why, and who kind of guy. So where are we going? Yeah. Why are we doing it? And who is going to be the ones to get us there to achieve it? Yeah. And we yeah. have to stay in that mindset. Why am I doing this? Where are we going? And who who's going to help us? That's it. And and, and if we if we capture that and we get people to buy in, man, we can do anything. Yes. Nothing's impossible. No. Nothing's no. impossible. So can you tell us now off a little bit here of what you've seen in ministry with teamwork or however you want to tie this in, can you tell us about one of the greatest testimonies that you've ever witnessed while being uh, in ministry or even outside, even in the workforce about teamwork? Or well, let me just say this. Uh, I'm going to give you my most recent right okay. now. Let's start. Let's say that. I, I don't know the greatest, to be honest okay. with you, but let me just give you the most recent testimony, powerful testimony. Um, there was this lady in our church. Um, her son's friend was in jail. Okay. He's an addict over and over again. He'd get out 
get arrested, get out, get arrested. I mean, just went through this cycle. He was in his mid-20s. The kid was a mess. And she's like, I, you know, I, I don't know. He, he just is, I, I don't know. I don't want to say he's a lost cause mm-hmm. or lost hope. So um, me and another guy from our church, this was before I was a pastor. This was, year, this was about five years ago. Okay. We went and visited him in jail. And we would take turns and go and visit him mm. and pour into him. And when I first, man, he was rough. Like he was, he was coming down off of heroin when I first oh, wow. met him um, in the jail cell. And, you know, just mumbled, couldn't hardly speak. Um, it, it, but there's power in sowing seeds, mm-hmm. right? There is power in sowing seeds. Don't ever underestimate the power of a seed. Yeah. Um, and we just sowed into this guy's life. And so... That was like five years ago. I hadn't seen or heard of this guy in I don't know how long. Yeah. And he, we have this new guy at church come in and they, you know, everybody that's new in the doors, if I'm around, they, you know, I tell, let me know. I want to know if somebody mm-hmm. new comes in. So this guy comes in, shake his hand, talking to him. And he's, uh, you know, talking to me. He's got this job. He just got out of jail uh, because he went to prison. So I guess I didn't finish the story. I quit. I couldn't contact the guy anymore because he went from jail. He went to court okay. and he went and spent four years in prison. Gotcha. And you can't, I, I was not able to go into mm-hmm. this prison and all this. So get this guy. I didn't even recognize him. It was the guy that I had been ministering to over five oh, years wow. ago. He's in, he looks, he's buff. Like he had been working out. Sure. And he was like, you don't really, you don't recognize me. Do you? I was like, man, I, I did we go to school together? I, I don't know. I don't, he goes, I'm Chris. And I was like, Chris, okay. He says, you don't remember me, do you? I was like, man, I'm sorry, man. I don't remember you. And and again, I told you earlier, my memory is not the greatest. (laughs) So we start talking. I was like, whoa, Chris. Wow. I was like, dude, what's happening? He's like, God completely changed my life. And he has come to church every single Sunday since he's been out of prison now for months. He's got a job. He's he's paid off all of his debts uh, that he owed to the state. He's clean. Praise I God. mean, I, we've gone out to eat, and I went to minister to him. I wanted to help him. He helped me. I was like, dude, you're helping me. And I was wow. like, you're an example to me. And so that's just one of the, When God changes somebody, man, he changes somebody. Amen. It's not just a mind change. It's a heart change. And this kid's on fire for God wow. right now. So that's the most powerful testimony. It's a life being changed. Sure, sure. And we can't underestimate the power of a seed. You know, and that, that takes leadership too right there. I mean, the fact that... You probably, there's probably a few times you probably was like, man, I just want to stay home. I don't want yeah. to go to this place. Yeah. But because you kept plowing and you kept cultivating the ground, yeah, whatever, whatever, whatever analogy we want to use, yeah. because you kept pushing. Yeah. This young man was impacted, obviously, Dude, yes. by the ministry that you did. So, yeah, that's awesome. Continue to push and continue yeah. to push. But we're going to close this out, Pastor Dad. We're running out of time. And, yeah. and uh, but someone may be watching right now that may be feeling like they haven't bought in, so to speak, to the vision of their church or employer and and know that they may have dropped the ball instead of running with it and it has cost the business or even a church a great deal. Yeah. Can you pray for them right now that God will begin to give them a desire to see themselves used at their fullest for the kingdom of God and give them a passion to help achieve the vision that's been presented to them, if you will? Yes. Now, before I pray, can I just say something? Yeah. Uh, there is a, a thing for a team, a, a team member. Mm-hmm. It, this is for anybody, team members, team leaders. Okay. It's, we, you've got to ruthlessly eliminate BCD, BCD, blaming, complaining, and defending. Mm. Most of the time when I see problems with people not buying in or being problems in teams That's as good. teammates, it's one of those three things. You've got to eliminate that from your life. And so I'm going to pray that. Say that again. Blaming. Blaming, complaining, complaining defending. defending. It's BCDing. That's good. Don't be a BCDer. If you come to Christian That's Heritage good. and you say BCDing, they're going to know. Hopefully, they're going to know. Do You don't want to be a BCDer. That's good. If, if you're constantly blaming everybody else, if it's always every, and you can't take ownership, mm. You've got to look, you're a BCD or if you're always complaining about the leadership, well, they should be doing this. They should be doing that. Why are they doing this? As a complainer, nobody wants a complainer on a team. That's a BCD or if you're constantly having to defend to defend yourself That's good. all the time, if you're always defending yourself, you're a BCD or knock it off. I mean, eliminate BCD. That's good. If man. you find yourself BCDing on a team, man, eliminate it. It will cap you. And then the second thing is autopilot. 
Okay. Especially through COVID, man. I've seen a lot of people on autopilot. What's yeah. autopilot? It's taking it out of it's 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 if you've got a calling on your life, if you if somebody's watching, they've got a calling yeah. or listening, they've got a calling on their life. And and we find ourselves kind of coasting. Yeah. Uh, we put our life in autopilot. Man, you've got to eliminate autopilot. Go after what God's that's got for good. you. Life goes quick, man. I'm I mean, I'm 34. Some would say that's young, some would say that's old. You know, I think that's right in the middle. I think you're in the middle. Yeah. But I mean, like my life is like half over. Yeah. You know, and that's how we got to look. I don't want to waste a day. That's I good. don't want to go in autopilot. That's so good. eliminate BCD. That's good. Get out of autopilot. Live with passion. It's not worth it to always, you know, if you're on a team and you're constantly bashing, if you're constantly being a problem, you know, either look for another team. You know what they say? Good teams can lose. Mm-hmm. But you can't win with a bad one. <laughs> so yeah, that is true. So you got to look at yourself as a yeah, teammate, and that's and, and that's not just for leaders. That's for every single human being on earth. Yeah. Um, and so I'm gonna pray. Yeah. And, and, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pray that that we would just buy in to what God is doing in our lives and our businesses. Listen, God's in control. Amen. The Bible says He wrote every day of our lives in His book before one of them came to be. If we would just trust Him and just go after it, He's not going to yeah. lead you wrong. Amen. And so that's what I'm going to pray. Amen. Let's do that. Father, right now, we just come yes. to you in the name of Jesus. God, we pray for those who, who are on a team, those who are leading teams. God, those who, who are in a, a, a circle that is, that is achieving something on this earth. God, I pray right now that, that there would be such a teamwork, a, a group effort of coming yes. together. God, egos would be dropped off yes. at the door. God, that we would come in with one sole focus, and that is to live our lives for you and you alone. God, I pray that the one who's battling with BCDing, blaming, mm. complaining, defending, God, help them to realize that it's not helping anybody or any situation when they are constantly looking and, and blaming everybody else, complaining about everything, and defending themselves. God, help us to be part of a team like we read about in the book of yes. Acts. God, that just changed and flipped the world upside down. God, I pray that for those who have found themselves in autopilot, with COVID and this shutdown and this quarantine, it's been real easy to coast. God, I pray that passion would begin to burn and ignite inside yes. of your people again. God, that autopilot would be eliminated in the true full gospel churches in this city and all over the world. God, that we would get out of autopilot and we would live with passion to see the work of God yes. and the kingdom expanded. God, I pray for the one that's listening that's a leader. God, raise them up to a standard that they didn't know was possible. God, I pray that you would lift them up and strengthen them. And God, I pray right now for those who are maybe not in leadership, but they're in a team. They're a part of something that you're doing on this earth. God, I pray that they would be the greatest teammate that they could be. God, we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can I say one more thing? Yes, We're sir. going over. My great-grandma Pratt used to say this. She just passed away not too long ago. She said, you came into this world with nothing, and you're going to leave with nothing except for what you do for Jesus Christ. That's good. We got to remember that, man. Amen. It's all about him. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Devin, for uh, just gracing us with your presence and just pouring into the viewers that are watching. And so, Absolutely. hey, we thank you for watching Bridging the Gap, and we'll see you next week. God bless you.